Okay. Hey everybody, uh, welcome. We are gonna do a series on different disposition choices. Um, we're here with the modern mortician, Melissa, down in Texas. So give us a quick snippet on this first video, Melissa. You're not so much a resume, but the business you have and your focuses of what you do in Texas, in a nutshell. Well, I am known online as the modern mortician. I educate on alternative forms of disposition, like water cremation, natural burial, things that aren't in our typical realm of death care, but are becoming more popular. Um, <clears throat> I opened a business in 2019, the beginning January, called Green Cremation Texas, and we just expanded to open our second location, Green Cremation and Burial Texas. Um, so I'm able to serve the Central Texas area with more progressive options for end-of-life care. That's awesome. So the first, we're going to do four of these videos for now. I'm sure we will expand and grow as new disposition choices pop up and become a matter of discussion because some of these weren't even mainstream or in the focal point of the consumer until the last year or two. Um, so I think it's interesting to dive into them a little more. So this first one we're going to talk about today is composting. Um, it has come up. It's very close. So how close are they to beginning this as a functioning business? When does it open? Do you know the opening? We don't know. It's still <clears throat> trying to get licensing is okay. what I understand. Um, while it is passed uh, in Washington, uh, there's also Colorado and California that are looking to get it legalized. But the next step is actually licensing to get the facilities open in the areas that they're wanting. Um, so there's a lot of back and forth going on there is what I'm understanding. Um, so we'll see where that takes them. So this composting was kind of this initiative is by Recompose. Is that the name? Is that how you pronounce mm -hmm. it? Recompose. And there's been a lot of testing done. So this essentially you would take a body, a deceased, place them in a tube or a pod, um, I think is what they're calling them, correct? With mm -hmm. specific items, um, wood chips and, and other items. And compost the person down over a certain period of time, generate out um, soil or compost from, I guess you wouldn't call it soil, compost, correct? Mm -hmm. Right. And the family can take that home or can be disposed of, or I think there's some parts of the plan I don't know the answers to. I'm hoping you do, I guess, to even just some of my questions about the whole process, but people are liking it because it's a natural alternative. They're also liking it because it's solving a problem with the big um, metropolitan areas like Seattle. Yes. There's no burial space. So this is a, a similar um, form of disposition to natural burial, except you're not staying in the same place. You're being redistributed elsewhere. Um, they also announced a partnership, I believe, or something with Better Place Forests, which is another uh, startup that reserves sections of forest for cremated remains to be scattered around trees that are already existing, um, where you can have a plaque put on a tree. Uh, so they've got something going on there where this compost soil could be taken to those trees um, and spread around there. But again, it's still all in the talking phase and not the action phase. And I'm really interested to see where they're gonna go in the action phase of this because there are some, some topics that have been brought up that are questionable as to how well this is going to work in the long run, in the legitimacy of it. So in the process, I mean, it's cost-wise, it looks business model that for a consumer, it's around 5,000, 5,500, I believe was what I was reading. So it's definitely much more than cremation. Right. But there's no, you know, the only environmental footprint is that facility and the ground space that it takes up essentially over time. But if you break down how many times that one facility is going to be reused over and over and over, it's much less of a footprint than cremation will ever, you know, create. Absolutely. So, which I think is great. Mm -hmm. 
um, because I know that's kind of the biggest environmentally, what are we doing to, you know, our space with burial and cremation and all these disposition choices. So everybody wants to be as green and friendly as possible, um, which is good. It's just, how do we do that? And I think people get frustrated too, because everything takes so long to come to fruition. Like we see with, you know, water cremation and all these other avenues that we have to go through all of the political hoops, all the environmentalist hoops, all of the legislation and all of this stuff. And it takes years and years and years to get to be able to just do what we want to do essentially. Right. As you have found, I know trying to get <laughs> going. Yeah. <laughs> little we'll talk about that with the water cremation video. Yes. Um, so Katrina Spade has been a, the huge spearheader of, I think, this kind of composting movement, would you say? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Oh, and so, and I've, so from what I've read and, and learned, they did a lot of trial runs with, you know, deceased, like donated bodies. And how long is this going to take? And what perfect... Uh, mix of things do they need to be with to create an efficient composting setup? Something that's not going to take six months, but it's going to take a much shorter time frame to create a good business model. So what do you know if that is in those pods that will create the breakdown and the natural chemical balance? Do you know? The information that I have other than wood chips is alfalfa. Um, I can't recall off the top of my head what else they've got going on, but it's all natural. Um, but the testing that they've done has only gone so far, like to a certain month point, um, and then they stop and they, you know, give up their findings. And some of the research that I was privy to reading only got to the part where the body um, has gone through decomp but there's still the skeleton intact and the, in the skin, kind of like saponification, you know, mm -hmm. where you have that, that soupy waxy, yep. like soap, soapy, you know, greasy leftover part of you. Um, and they haven't necessarily addressed that yet is what I was understanding. Mm -hmm. uh, but something we need to, to look at with this process is, how do they break down the bones if we're getting to the part where the bones are what's left after composting with cows? I think they go a whole lot longer time in order for the bones to break down, but this process is supposed to be accelerated to make room for new bodies to be introduced into the process, you know, kind of like rotating out. Right. So, um, I've found out recently that there is possibly that there is an auger involved. Hmm. which would grind up what's left. Um, and it's, it's kind of like, you have to look at it like this. What happens after cremation or water cremation? So information right. or water. have the skeleton left and you have to break those pieces down. So we kind of need to look at if, if that's, you know, the last step of composting, you know, we're looking at it like that. Um, but the question I would want to know about is what happens you know, with flame cremation and water cremation, when you've got mercury in your teeth, mm -hmm. that gets um, either burned away or uh, neutralized with water. It would still be in the soil mixture if it's not removed prior. So right. how would they address that? And then like titanium hit pieces, you know, we've seen all that that's left after cremation get an auger in there and you're going to break your machine. So are they going to individually go through each body and remove pieces of concern before breaking down bone or has that been addressed yet? And that's something that I haven't seen addressed in the public. We're seeing it marketed as a very gentle process. And I, I was all for it for myself until I started reading this research and I was like, pumping the brakes like oh Melissa no no so it's like I, I don't have any mercury in my teeth and I don't have any implants or anything um, but when you're marketing it is a very gentle process kind of like they do with water cremation very gentle still you've got that final process where it's not considered mm -hmm. gentle so we need to see where they're going to go with that and how they're going to address that concern by the scientific public well I think with every disposition there's 
a lot of people look at the big picture and they don't look at the individual steps where as we look at the individual steps, it's kind of like embalming. It's, you know, not for everybody. It seems barbaric to some people, but there's people who just say, but this is the end result of what I want. So I'm not going to focus on that. I'm going to look past it. And so they don't look at some of those individual steps as closely as maybe we do. Um, or they do and they're like, screw it, I'm not doing it because of those individual steps. So I think you have two sides of, you know, the coin when it comes to that is some people don't care because they just like what it stands for and what it is as long as environmentally those things have already been addressed and, you know, the process is in place. Because I would think, I mean, that's a lot of soil to go through. I mean, they're talking like four wheelbarrows full is what you're getting typically with an individual um, that, you know, if the family wants to take home, you've got four wheelbarrow fulls of a compost to take home and put in your yard or whatever you're doing. So what does that sifting and, you know, sorting process look like? Because that's a very hands-on for the worker who's doing all that for sure. Yeah. Definitely. <laughs> so, so there are a lot of questions, which I think is why things take so long and people don't maybe think of some of those little individual steps. You don't just put the body in, open the thing 30 days later, dump them out into a big drum and send them home with the family. There's all this don't other. <laughs> Wouldn't that be lovely if that was the case? Yes. Um, so, and I know that I did read too about that they'll pump in oxygen, you know, to speed up the process and make things happening. So I like that it's happening. I think it's a great option for, you know, like England where they're running out of land, you know, these little island spaces where, you know, the jig's going to be up at some point that you do completely run out of land. Um, so I think it's a great option. Um, so if they address the, the hip removal and the mercury and everything, you're back on board. I'm still on board with it either way. Yeah. It's a new option and it's something um, that people are going to, it's going to appeal to a great market of people. Um, but I think everything, especially in the professional community, for those of us that are supposed to be champions and cheerleading for change, we right. need to know what is really going on and how, when these are brought to us from the public, these questions, how to address them. Oh, of course. I know I have a lot of questions like, how does the soil get home to the, or the compost get home to the family? Like, are they using a big old drum of something or what is, is it made pretty? Like, you know, what does that step of it look like? So I'm wondering just some of those things. And, um, you know, I wonder like business model wise, how many bodies do they need to compost a month to maintain a revenue to do, you know, like I like the number side of it is a business what that also needs to look like. It's really, that to me is fascinating. And is somebody peeking and checking on my love, my loved one in their pot yeah. every day? <laughs> like, is there a GoPro in there, like checking out, going? So yeah. I think there's a lot of questions, like you said, but I think they'll come over time. Um, but I think it's interesting. The media always like throws it out and then the consumers are like, but I want this, I want that. And it's like, okay, this is a vision. We're working towards it. We're getting everybody on board, but we got to go through all these avenues before we get there. So definitely an interesting one though, this composting. I think it'll be, I think it'll be good when it gets going. I'm rooting for them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you need a t-shirt. That's your t-shirt right there. <laughs> So guys, that is part one, uh, composting. Post your questions below. Um, we'll try and find some answers and we'll keep you updated as you know more research is done, more things are released to us about this process because we're excited to see change coming. See you on the next episode. Bye.